Hey everybody, Home Slice Center here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a team featuring an OG Kanto Pokemon, Gyarados, in the Master League that helped me climb about 100 ELO back over Legend to hit rank number 148 in the world on the global leaderboards. The team features Gyarados on the lead, Ho-Oh with Solar Beam as the safe switch to try and lure out and potentially nuke unsuspecting Rhyperiors, and as the closer, Necrozma Dusk Main. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's check out an OG Kanto legend, Gyarados, in the Open Master League. Hopping into the first match, picking up a great lead Gyarados into Shadow Rhyperior. Your opponent is going to save switch into Zacian, and I have a great response available to the Zacian save switch with my Duskmane Necrozma. Duskmane is always going to be able to tank one move. They're going to go for the Wild Charge. I will be firing off the Sunsteel Strike on the CMP tie. At high elo, most trainers will actually no shield this move because at minus two, a Dark Pulse will not KO. But you know what will KO? A Sunsteel Strike. So I'm just not going to bait there. I go straight for the Sunsteel, pick up the Knockout. Opponent knew that was only a Dark Pulse, but even a Dark Pulse does a lot to Shadow Rhyperior. Back in comes the Gyarados opponent is going to bait with a Breaking Swipe. I'm going to look to farm up quite a bit of energy here with the Gyarados and unleash an Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail would KO from here. Opponent is going to use their final shield and I'm more than happy to match shields back. They're going to have to switch out. Despite the double bait, they cannot outpace and in the back is Kyogre. This is a bit awkward for the opponent. If they KO the Ho-Oh, then I get farm on Gyarados. So they just look to over farm, thinking they can tank a Brave Bird, but what they cannot tank is a Solar Beam. Rhyperior is going to farm up a ton of energy, but unfortunately for the Rhyperior, they are five energy short of the Breaking Swipe plus Rock Record double up, which means that I'm going to be able to get that win because I banked the Aqua Tail before switching. So Aqua Tail KO Shadow Rhyperior, and that is a good game. Hopping into the next match, picking up a terrible lead, leading Gyarados into Florges. I save switch into Ho-Oh. Opponent sends out Rhyperior. Okay, here we go. I get to the Solar Beam. Now, these were getting unshielded quite a bit, but unfortunately this time the opponent actually does respect the Solar Beam. If you're seeing a save switch Ho-Oh, it's probably on Solar Beam, so a good call from my opponent. I was able to successfully bait up the Rhyperior, which is good news for the Dusk main. But the bad news for me is that Rock Wrecker will KO Gyarados, so I'm forced to shield. One note is that if you do have Gyarados, Gyarados is preferred as the Shadow. I just don't have a playable Shadow. Here, my opponent does not commit to the Rock Wrecker. And again, they don't commit to the Rock Wrecker. I was just going to overfarm and throw one turn before the Rock Wrecker, but they just keep going for Breaking Swipes. And that allows me to get to 100 energy. And honestly, residual energy usually going to be a good thing. I'm going to switch out into Duskmane. In the back is Ursa Luna, and this could actually get a little bit tricky. Sunsteel Strike is going to absolutely destroy this Ursa Luna, but Ursa Luna can barely survive, and I can never Shadow Claw down. This means I'm actually in a little bit of a precarious position. I have a tough bait call to make. I shield, and I get it right. It's the high horsepower. That's a massive call. My switch clock will be up soon, and since my opponent didn't commit to a rock record in that Gyarados matchup, I have stored energy. Clock's up. I get the switch and the snipe, denying the energy from the Ursa Luna, and this game should be over. In comes Florges. Florges going to get hit with an Aqua Tail, and I'm pretty close to a Dark Pulse on the Necrozma as well. Opponent, looks like they're gonna commit to a farm down. I actually throw an alignment there because I know that once I get this into Dark Pulse range, that my opponent should just be in a completely lost position. They have so much energy here, but I can take the Moon Blast, click the Dark Pulse, and Dark Pulse will KO, so this game is over. The Moon Blast connects, but wait, did you see that? They got the 10% attack drop. The Dark Pulse now doesn't KO. Oh my goodness, if this is the Moon Blast, I've just lost, but thankfully it's just the disarming voice and we're able to escape with the win, but that attack debuff had me stressed out, oh my goodness. We move to the next match, Gyarados into Dialga, tough lead, I'm going to save switch into Ho-Oh, opponent responds with Landorus. Typically if a Landorus counter switches as the Ho-Oh, I like to try and call the bait for this exact reason. This is kind of a demonstration of what not to do with this team is, unfortunately, they're going to bait because if they're behind on energy, that's how they catch up, they catch up with a bait. And now, I'm in a tough spot. Since they baited me, they've caught back up. Now they can go straight Stone Edge, and I just don't really have a way to win this matchup, as they're just going to shield and make a Stone Edge. My hope is that I'm going to switch out into the Gyarados, and they're still going to throw the energy, but I don't get the snipe. They don't throw the energy, and now it's Gyarados versus Dialga. 
Shadow Gyarados would be preferred for this team. A Shadow Gyarados is typically going to do what regular Gyarados does, but better. I just don't have a Master Leaf Shadow Gyarados. I've never found one that's a good enough IV. My opponent wouldn't let me make a crunch, but I do get the Aqua Tail. And while the Aqua Tail doesn't KO, it is going to get that Dialga pretty low. Dialga is forced to fire off some energy, and I'm actually going to go for farm with the Ho-Oh. I'm going to go for farm with the Ho-Oh. If I had Brave Bird, I could have it here, and that forces my opponent to throw on alignment, which I can catch. And now, I think I'm in the clear, but it's Ho-Oh in the back. Unfortunately, my Gyarados was so good into their back line, but unfortunately, my Gyarados was not able to get that alignment. Here, my opponent, interestingly enough, is actually running some tech of their own. They're running the Earthquake on the Ho-Oh, but I just can't win this. Even if I get a Sacred Fire debuff, which I do, I'm just not going to be able to win this game. The awkward situation I was in there with the Dusk Main was if I'm the Dusk Main and I throw energy, they just farm me down. So I had to try and force them to throw energy by just farming up a ton, but even then, I couldn't win. We move to the next match, leading Gyarados into Rhyperior. Unfortunately, I do end up throwing the Aqua Tail on alignment. The opponent's animation was desync there for a little bit, and that did cause me to make a timing error. But here, I get my revenge. I get the catch and a sneak of a full incinerate. You absolutely love to see it. Now, I'm going to get to leave with 100 energy on the Ho-Oh, and there's nothing Rhyperior players love more than bringing in a Rhyperior to just completely invalidate a 100 energy Ho-Oh. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to bring in Rhyperior, and there's no way they're shielding this. Solar Beam connects. Goodbye, Rhyperior. In the back is going to be Prim Arena. I can just bank the Solar Beam, send in the Dusk Main, and since they have Charm, they're going to immediately resign the match. We move to the next match, Gyarados versus Palkia. Palkia, a matchup that in theory Gyarados should do kind of okay, but the unfortunate reality is there's just such a massive difference in stat product that Palkia does win the zeros, just straight spatial rend. So I'm actually going to let this through. I'm just going to concede the zeros in exchange for farm on Duskmane. I'm going to look for this farm down, but the Palkia barely hangs on, making it to the last second Aqua Tail. That's a bit unfortunate for me, but I do get to leave with quite a bit of energy. Out comes a Melmetal, and that's not a Pokemon that I see too often. Melmetal, honestly, back in the day was like top Master League meta, but Melmetal, unfortunately, maybe it could use some move update love because it is really struggling as of late. I'm going to go for a Sunsteel and then an aggressive switch into Ho-Oh. I switch into the Ho-Oh. I have to shield in case they covered for the switch by going for a Rock Slide. It is just a superpower. In the back is Mammal Swine, and unfortunately for my opponent, Ho-Oh just too good in the back, and they will concede the match. We move to the next match, Gyarados versus Ho-Oh. Opponent safe switch to Dialga, and here I am going to respond with the Dusk Mane. If I respond with Ho-Oh, things can get quite uncomfortable down energy, so the Dusk Mane definitely feels a lot more comfortable for me, as even if they do go for a Roar of Time in the Zeros, I can survive this. So I'm more than happy to let this through. Opponent is actually on Thunder on their Dialga, so unfortunately for my opponent, they do not have that Roar of Time. The fact that the Roar of Time isn't guaranteed when you catch it, definitely a frustrating part of the game. You may have noticed at the start of the match that I did three Dragon Breaths and Switch, and that was not an accident. Having three Dragon Breaths residual means that as long as my opponent is at least two incinerates away from the move, which they were, I can guarantee that I can outpace with the Gyarados and either get some super effective damage or force a shield. My opponent grabs a shield with a Sacred Fire. They fish for a debuff. They did not get it. In the back is Dawn Wings. I build up to the crunch, bait with the Aqua Tail, and here's my switch out into Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh. At this point, I really don't see a reason for my opponent to bait, so I will shield, and it's the Moongeist Beam. A debuff would be massive. Again, it's a true coin flip. It's a 50-50 on whether this attack drop comes through. So I go for the Sacred Fire. I get the debuff, and that means that I think that I can survive the Moongeist Beam. Opponent goes for the Moongeist. I survive it. They bring in their Ho-Oh, but... I'm able to withstand that damage, that debuff coming in clutch for me. I fire off that Sacred Fire. It picks up the knockout, the switch into the Gyarados, and Gyarados by the narrowest of margins, able to outpace. We get the Aqua Tail, knock out the Dawn Wings, and secure a very close win. Gyarados versus Zygarde in the next match. Now, this is a matchup where you really want the Shadow Gyarados. The regular Gyarados just does not have the damage output. 
Even though both moves are going to hit for neutral, I'm going to fish for the 30% debuff chance with the crunch. The crunch debuff does not come through. That is a little bit unfortunate, but it is more likely to not get it than get it. So most of the time, you're not going to be getting crunch debuffs. My opponent doesn't get the crunch debuff either. The good news for me is they are going to have to throw another move or I will make it to another Aqua Tail. So my opponent is going to throw right here. This can potentially set up farm for me. So I'm actually thinking to go for a Ho-Oh farm down. Opponent now going to pivot into Landorus. Oh boy, this is tough. You know what? Last time I shielded a bait and it got me in trouble. So I'm calling it. And there's the Sand Seer down energy Landorus. Love to bait so much. And being able to punish a bait there in this matchup is just so, so good for Ho-Oh. Here my opponent tries to CMP time me. Trader, no. An entire 20 free energy goes to the Ho-Oh. That wasn't my most efficient incinerate ever as it did go well over 100, but I just wanted to leave at 100 energy for pacing purposes. So Landorus is removed from the field of play. In comes Zygarde. In the back is their own Ho-Oh, and that is really unfortunate for the Dusk Main. Dusk Main can do a great many wonderful things, but it is not great at dealing with Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh is going to fire off the energy when they get to 100. In theory, maybe what I should have done was cap tied there and gone for the Sunsteel Strike as they made the move. Unfortunately, they do get the attack drop, which means that they can now survive a Dark Pulse. So even though I make this Dark Pulse, it does not KO. So the attack debuff won me the previous game, but unfortunately, it's going to lose me this game as my opponent is going to get to connect with a Brave Bird that just does too much damage. And the Zygarde snipes me down as I'm short of a move. We move to the next match, Gyarados versus Reshiram. Reshiram, a pick that I definitely feel like is picking up in popularity at high elo here. I'm going to farm up quite a bit of energy, and I am going to respect a potential Stone Edge from my opponent. It is just going to be the Fusion Flare, however, so I definitely do regret the shield a little bit, but even a Fusion Flare would do a lot to a Gyarados here. I do get the farm down, though, so I'm able to win switch advantage. Opponent sends out Duskmane, and the fact that Duskmane is their best answer here is quite a surprise. So they clearly do not like this Gyarados' energy. Crunch lands. I get a Crunch debuff, and this might actually incentivize them to shield. I'm short of the Crunch, but with the defense lowered, an Aqua Tail would actually do quite a bit of damage. And now I can bring in Ho-Oh in the back. Opponent is going to have Kyogre. And this endgame honestly feels fine for me. Duskmane into Kyogre is neutral enough that even if I'm not able to KO the Kyogre, I just get a nice incinerate farm down, and then I'm going to be able to just Sacred Fire the Lion and take the win. So my opponent in a bit of an awkward predicament. They shield the first move, which means now I can go for the Sunsteel Strike. It's resisted, but it does do more damage. The Sunsteel gets them low. Opponent has a tough choice. Do they throw and let me get farm on Ho-Oh? No, they're going to let it go, and they're going to try and sweep with Duskmane. Duskmane, Outrage. The second one will be lethal. They're going to fire off their energy. Outrage will be able to pick up the knockout, but their Duskmane is too low. I can bring in mine, survive the Shadow Claw and take the win. We move to the next match. Gyarados into Tabu Bulu, a disastrous lead as we're completely walled. I'm going to save switch into Ho-Oh. Opponent responds with Palkia, and this is not what I'm hoping to see answer this Ho-Oh save switch. I'm going to go for the Sacred Fire in the hopes that I can get a debuff and maybe make a beam later, but I don't get the debuff. And now, I'm just not really in a position where I'm going to be able to make a play for Switch. So my only play is to hope that I'm going to be able to sweep with Duskmane. But the most common team with Bulu lead is Bulu, Palkia, Rhyperior. And if it's going to be that Rhyperior in the back and my ho didn't bait it out, then it's just going to be a loss. Crunch KOs. I send in Necrozma. There's the Rhyperior. Yeah, without baiting it out, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to win that game. We move to the next match, picking up a winning lead, Gyarados versus Kyogre. Opponent safe switches into Charm Primarina. Game started a little bit there, but I'm still able to bring in the Duskmane. And Duskmane, since they're on Charm, very comfortably tanks the Hydro Cannon. And they don't really have any pressure towards farming me down after. So I'm going to farm all the way to 100 energy, unleash the Sunsteel. Tried to go for an Undercharge, but Sunsteel is just an insanely good move. 
Again, it's resisted, but it does more. If you're only getting to one move, you want to Sunsteal. So I Sunsteal, look at the damage, absolutely rocking Kyogre. Kyogre has to try and make it to a Thunder, but they're not gonna be able to get there. I outpace, I make it to the Crunch. Crunch is going to KO. In the back is Togekiss. You are not double charming today, trainer. And they will immediately resign the match. Good lead in the next match, Gyarados versus Rhyperior. Rhyperior staying in this lead matchup, which is great for me. They're now going to switch out into Zacian. Zacian going to be answered with the Duskmane. So off to a pretty good start in this match. I was able to bank energy on the Gyarados. Zacian will go for the Wild Charge. And here I'm going to overfarm. And again, I really like going for the CMP tie versus Zacian. Zacian is 6-6-5 in their counts to Wild Charge. Again, most people will try and call that bait at high elo just because they understand that that's their way of winning the zeros, is the Duskmane making a mistake in baiting. My opponent is gonna shield. They have a ton of energy here. If they're able to successfully bait with a Breaking Swipe, they immediately have the Rock Wrecker ready to go. I go from two shields to zero in the blink of an eye. They should look to switch after this. In the back is Tabu Bulu, Tabu Bulu, I'm so sorry. In comes ho -Oh, and the opponent will resign the match. Overall, I did have quite a bit of fun with this team. This team definitely does rely on people not being prepared for the Solar Beam ho -Oh. like being able to successfully bait out the Rhyperior and then land the Solar Beam definitely relies on opponents not being aware of the strategy. So overall, I had a lot of fun running Gyarados. I definitely wish that I had a Shadow one as the Shadow one I think could perform better, but I do think that it's cool to be able to use one of the OG, I mean, technically it's not a legendary Pokemon, but one of the OG G Kanto legends like Gyarados is a Kanto institution and being able to climb about 100 elo from basically off of the leaderboards to number 148 in the world. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The Sport Guys Vide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.